Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Gaming Review with your host, The Oilfield Gamer. I'll be revisiting a game today again, since the last one actually seemed to, people seem to really like it. So, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Asteroids for the Atari 7800. Remember my last look at this game. Remember the last one, my opinion changed to the game, for the better. Let's see how my opinion does on this one. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, go over the background of the game. I wish I could find more history on the game, but there's not really much on the 7800 version. Probably because most people liked either the arcade or the 2600 version better. Of course, I've played all of them. I still prefer the 7800 version to the other two. But, let's... that's enough about that. Asteroids was first developed by Atari Inc. and released into arcade in 1979. This version was later ported to the 2600 with some minor upgrades, mostly in the color and a little bit better graphics. Wasn't much better though. The version we are looking at was developed by Atari Corporation and released on the 7800 in 1986. The differences between the games that I can see are strictly much better graphics in the 7800 version and well, I guess the sound's a little bit better too. You'd have to check it out for yourself, but uh, and a warp button versus having a shield that you had in the 2600 and I believe the arcade version. So, I mean, that's the only differences I can see. From what I can find, the game was also released in Europe, unfortunately for y'all, and but it was never released into Japan. And I wouldn't worry because those of you in Japan, you did not miss a whole lot. Besides, I hate. The controllers for the 7800. I mean, I got it right here. That's the controller for the 7800. I hate this thing. So, you can hook up Sega controllers to it, but you gotta stay more authentic, right? So, that's all I got for that. That's the background. Let's get into the exciting part of all this, the gameplay. This game is a top-down shooter, but it doesn't scroll. Instead, you see the same screen the entire time. You can fly off screen and reappear on the opposite side, so if you go down to the bottom, you're going to come out of the top, or left and right, and so forth. Now, the object of this game is incredibly simple. Shoot asteroids! Why would you? Never mind. We're not going to get into that. You will also get a chance to shoot the occasional flying saucer. There are no real levels to the game, but once you clear the asteroids, they respawn with a few more than before. You get three lives before you get a game over. Now, should be easy to avoid the game over by just flying around, right? If not, you can warp your ship out of harm's way, but you need to be careful. Sometimes when you exit the warp, your ship explodes for no discernible reason. Many claim it's because it puts you in the path of an asteroid, but I have yet to see that. Just nothingness around me after exiting that damn warp. Nothing. Just... Blackness. Now on to the... what's probably the second most important part of any game. The controls. Where do I start with this? I said it before, I'll say it again. I hate the controller for this console. But I will use it, you know, keep the originality and all that. Your ship, whenever you're flying around the screen, is, to me, rather floaty. With that said, though, I believe that is by design. Ouch. One button shoots your gun, the other puts you into hyperdrive, as they call it. Or warp, whatever you want to call it. Hyperdrive puts you in a random spot on the map. So use with caution. You've been warned. Like I said, you will pop out. Sometimes you will be in front of an asteroid. Most of the time there's just nothing. Just total darkness. I don't get it.
All right. How about them graphics? This game graphically is a huge upgrade to the vector graphics of the arcade and whatever the 2600 graphics were. I guess vector with color. I don't know. You can actually see some detail in the asteroids. I mean, you can actually tell what it is. The flying saucers also look more detailed. Sadly, while the edges of your ship are sharper, they retain the bland-looking triangle for your ship. Really? I mean, really? You upgrade everything else graphically, but only slightly tweak the ship. I wish I could show you guys the arcade and 2600 versions, so, so you have a reference here. But I don't have those games. I don't even have a way to play the arcade board, and I don't have a 2600. And I hate emulation. Let's, let's just not go there. There are other examples spread across YouTube, however, so feel free to look around for them if you want. Now, how about that sound? Well, it isn't the worst. The asteroids only make sound when exploding. I mean, it is in the vacuum of space, so I guess that makes sense. They attempted to make your gun sound like a laser. It's close enough, I guess. The flying saucers make noise to attempt to indicate flying, I suppose. It's kind of a weird sound. The engines on your craft make a rocket sound, I, I guess. They could have also added music to this game. Instead, they keep the background beep. 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 It just gets faster. Which, I mean, I guess that counts as music. Tell you what, just have a listen. So, I bet a lot of you are probably wondering, so how hard is this game? Well, this game is actually harder than you would think. The number of asteroids at the start of each stage only depends on your score, it seems. I mean, it's... I guess I've never really paid much attention to it. And I have no time to count. I will also say, it appears to me, the accuracy from the flying saucers increases to dead-eye accuracy the faster the beeping gets. I mean, really? How is that fair? Who... Yeah, anyways. To me, the game appears set up to make sure you fail. I mean, it's... I think it's... They still use the arcade type of deal, and it's meant to eat quarters. That was the whole purpose of the game. To eat as many quarters as they could get you to feed the machine. Alright. I guess since I've done venting about the, how difficult the game is, we'll move on to how fun the game is. Oh boy. I personally, I enjoy this game. But, this may sound odd, I'm just saying. So, don't, don't get mad at me for this. It is not too terribly fun. It is actually really boring. And with its increased difficulty, that just drags this game's fun factor down more. Oh boy. A casual gamer won't enjoy this game at all. And really and truly, only a hardcore gamer or a collector would enjoy it. I don't even think a collector would unless he's just a really hardcore gamer. So, yeah, I can't say it. This game is not fun at all. Alright. Let's move on to those final thoughts, shall we, and be done with this game once and for all. I will say this again, it is considered a shooter, an overhead shooter, where you just sit on one screen, but anyways. And I love shooters. But this is a deeper dive into the game than I gave the first time. And originally I gave it a 6 or 7 out of 10, I don't really remember. You can go back and look and see if I said it in that last video. I honestly don't remember. And I'm not going back to look at it. I'm lazy. Sue me. Anyways, did it still make the cut and remain in that 6 to 7 range? Well, you get no continues. Just three lives per play. I mean, ugh. That's ugh. And the controls are incredibly floaty and not precise at all. I mean, it is Atari. I mean, what did we expect? 
it is hard to make slight adjustments to make your shots. I mean, there's a lot of times you'll be sitting there and just you're off by like that much and bam, you, the freaking alien for some reason just kills you like that. I mean, what can you do? The game is harder than it should be, though. I play it mostly on expert. I play most games on expert. Now, if I need to practice first, I might play it on a lower difficulty, but that's a whole other discussion, too. The graphics are really good, though, compared to the other older versions of the game. Uh, the newer versions, obviously, are going to be on much better consoles. The sound isn't good as it could have been. I mean, the NES, which was what this thing was competing against, had much better sound card. And I really don't know the sound card in this thing. I guess I can do a deep dive into these consoles one day. Uh, if y'all are interested in that, let me know. And uh, it isn't fun and incredibly boring. Yet, I'm still trying to reach 100,000 points and see if I can roll it over. I mean, that would be 100... What is that? 100% complete of the game? Yeah. We'll go with that. The best I have gotten is close to, I think, 20,000. That's on Expert. I don't remember what I got on Intermediate. I think it's 50,000. But anyways, with that being said, despite the fact it's incredibly boring, I still like it because I like shooters. But I will have to give the game a 5 out of 10. That's right. It went down once I look deeper into it. Also, uh, this game, just to throw that out there, currently complete in the box is averaging about $15. I think I spent 10 on mine, so, you know, that's acceptable. I'm, I'm okay with that. So if you're looking to buy the game and get it complete, then do it. It's worth the purchase to me. If you're a casual gamer, probably not. But, uh, yeah, so that's all I have for this game. And before I sign off, remember guys, always be the best of yourself, the best version of yourself, no matter what anyone else is doing around you. You can do it. I'm going to rehash a few things here. I've said this before in a previous video, but since I'm redoing the series again and starting over from scratch, I feel it deserves to be said again. The reason I am doing all of this, first of all, it's fun. It's a blast and I love video games. I love talking about it. And to be perfectly honest, video games saved my life. They brought me out of one of the deepest, darkest moments of my life. I was depressed. And it's a scary thing because you, despite everyone there that wants to help you, who's trying to help you, you don't care. You've... It's hard to explain what it feels like. That fear. But gaming was my therapy when everything else failed and it pulled me out of it. I want to create a community through this channel that can do that for everyone. Gaming can be a special conduit to help others and bring people from different backgrounds together. And with that community, we can help more. Now, don't get me wrong. Everyone is strong enough to get out of a situation that they're in, whether it be depression or whatever. They can do it by themselves. Everyone, I believe, has that strength. But sometimes, you just need an outlet, like I did. Sometimes you need that extra push, that assistance, someone that'll listen. Someone that'll actually kind of understand where you're coming from. 
Now, I understand some people have trauma or think they do. That makes it harder. I didn't have that. I mean, what happened to me? Someone just tried to cut off my fingers, and I didn't know if I was ever going to get to use them again. Thank God I did. Because the last thing I wanted was to be stuck at home. Not being able to do anything. I mean, I could probably still do a few things. It's just the loss of one hand. I got a second one, right? <laughs> but, uh... It's not the same as someone who actually has other traumas. I'm not going to go into that. That's your business. And I'm not saying that it is the same as to what I had. What I had was completely different. It was fear that drove me to it more than anything. Though, some people with those traumas probably have fear too, so I can't really say much to that. But if you need someone to talk to, reach out to me. Let me help you if I can. I'm not guaranteeing I can. I'm just one person, but if I can save one person, I'm okay with that. And then, let's work together on building that community. Something that's global would be awesome. Think of how many people you could help. Anyways, everyone is welcome in that community that I want. Everyone. Doesn't matter your background. Everyone deserves help and a second chance at life. And sometimes you just need a little nudge. It's okay. But that's why I'm doing this. To help others the way I was able to help myself. And wishing I had someone who understood what I was going through. Just trying to give back a little. The best way that I can. God bless everyone.